Yes, hey Dinah. Hi, Mr. Wilkes. All right, well, let's get started. All right, Dinah, I had a chance to review the new lesson plan. It looks like this lesson will, uh, will be focused on multiplying decimals, TEKS 5.3e. Solve for products of decimals to the hundreds place, including situations involving money, using strategies based on place value understandings, properties of operations, and the relationship to multiplication uh, of whole numbers. I see that you've used your pre-unit assessments uh, to think about some of the uh, heterogeneous groups for this lesson, and that you have some questions planned in advance. Yes. So Dinah, in thinking about the lesson, what are some strategies that you'll use to engage all students, or excuse me, to engage all students in your learning? Yes, all students will be engaged when we do the partner work, part of the lesson, and also with the open-ending questions that I'll use. I'll make sure that all students are included in answering these. I do also have to consider that there may be some students who do not have the foundational skills for the learning uh, lesson of multiplication decimals. So one of the ways that I will address that is doing a warm up every day to help build these skills. Okay, so you're thinking about strategies for engagement like the partner work but also about the readiness skills those kids need to be successful. Okay, Dinah, what might it look like and sound like at the end of the lesson if students really got it? Thinking in terms of backward design. Well, we would be able to multiply decimals up to the hundreds place by whole numbers and show me that by not just in the algorithm form, they would also use the manipulatives, which are the cues from that doing a drawing, a visual representation using the area models, and write the equations and solve it. Okay, so using manipula manipulatives to solve a problem. Okay, I'm thinking about the sorts of problems that you'll allow your students to solve. Um, what is an example of one? Uh, for example, 5 times 0 0.1 or 7 times 0 0.3. Okay, so the focus, is on, the focus is on multiplying a whole number by a decimal number, excuse me, by a decimal number mm -hmm. up to the hundreds place. Correct. Okay, I'm thinking about the example that you gave me, or the examples that you gave me. What would be an example of a correct response? What does success, success look like? Well, they should be able to accurately show the drawing part in the visual representation using area models and then the equations and they will both be correct. For example, five times 0 0.1, I should see the answer in equation form and the visual representation. Okay, it sounds like accuracy is important as well as being able to show some sort of picture representation in an equation. So three things. Yeah, I think that it is important in the beginning of the lesson that I make it clear that these are the three things I am looking for. And now that I kind of talked these things out, I see the importance of in that. Okay, so you're thinking about really being transparent about the expectations with students. That's a, gr that's a great thing, Dinah. Yeah. So in that same spirit of transparency and being really explicit about what it is we're hoping uh, for with students, let's think for a moment about the outcome for this lesson in creating a uh, mastery outcome. When we create a mastery outcome, there are two things to consider. One, it should describe what students should know and be able to do. And second, it should be measurable. Okay. Okay, you have already talked a little bit about what students should know and be able to do. What does that sound like? 
Right, so it will be a written statement like I would understand how to multiply decimals and whole numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, you use the term understand. What might be a different verb you can use that maybe, uh, what, what might be a different verb you can use that may be measurable or a behavior that you can observe? Maybe I will be able to show an equation that I can multiply decimals by whole numbers. Right. Show or represent. So let's take out a piece of paper and practice writing that outcome that you'll share with your students tomorrow. Alright, so um, can, you, can you please tell me what you have there? I will be able to represent multiplication decimals by whole numbers in the pictures and equations. Very good. Alright, earlier you mentioned accuracy. How can we include that here? I will be able to accurately represent multiplication decimals by whole numbers in the picture and the equations. Mm -hmm. So you now have a mastery outcome. So it describes what students should be able to do um, and it's measurable. Okay, I get that. I see now that I am going to have to work on revising the way I write my students' outcomes in my lessons planning to more capture this idea of mastery learning so that I'll be, so I'll be something I have to work on. Good. So you're thinking about transferring uh, this uh, mastery outcome concept to other lessons. So, Dinah, as you think about the conversation today, what might be some of your next steps? I need to revise my exit ticket to change the way it's written to better represent mastery learning. And now that I think about it, I am going to have to revise my learning plan and how I introduce this topic so that it is really clear to the students that these are the three these are the things that I am looking for that they can do in the picture representation the equations and that they are both accurate okay so alignment your assessment and the outcome and also the presentation are things that you're thinking about. Yeah. So let's go over what the lesson plan format will entail once more and please uh, restate what this lesson will look like along with some of the, uh, the minutes involved. Yeah, so first we will start with a warm-up where the students will complete a one to two problems that cover the previous master materials with an introduction into the lesson, then we'll take five to seven minutes. During this time, I will take attendance. Then I will conduct a guided practice of what I am looking for in the current lesson. For example, what success will entail. This will take around 10 to 15 minutes. Then I will have students complete work doing independent practice which will take 20 minutes. During this time, I will actively monitor the room. Lastly, I will close the lesson by conducting an exit ticket, which I will use for assessment purposes. This should take up to the remaining class time about 10 minutes. Excellent, Diana. So before we wrap up, is there anything particular that you want me to be looking for? Well, you know, I have talked a lot about components and uh, components of the, uh, of the assessment. One thing that I would want is you to know, I'm truly trying to use a lot of different strategies to figure out 
whether kids are getting it. So it will be, it, so if we can revisit to discuss more about the assessments, that will be great. Uh, of course, absolutely. I will, I will definitely take a look and uh, help you with that. Um, specifically for some uh, assessment strategies and some data uh, dialogues. Great. Well, of Thank course. You. Thank you. You're welcome.